Hey girl! How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hello everybody, good evening. It's story time. Oh, we got a good one tonight, y'all. We got a good one tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. There you go. Hey, hey, hey. hey. You heard the... The song says, it's your time to shine. To be fair, I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to give a couple of, time, couple of minutes for us to let some people know we're in the room. So how are we today so far? Oh, we're doing amazing. We're doing amazing. I'm just trying to set this thing up. Yes, sir. We are doing amazing. Come on in the room, you guys. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Let me send this on out. Oh, oh I see you bouncing to the music. Oh, oh. Listen, it's prime. People are out. I know that's right. So we thank you for being in because I know this is your time right now. Mm. I know you'll be out there cutting <laughs> up. Cutting up. Listen, it's time to cut a rug now. Nah, nah, it's time to cut a rug, but I look, 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 look I'm not in the hurry. Listen, listen, listen. I just want to thank you so so much for coming in. Uh we are just excited to have you to be able to help tell your story. I was looking at your bio and I was like, man, you know, uh we want to talk about authenticity because one of the things I noticed in seeing you every time I saw you on a live. You're genuine and you're authentic, you know, and, and you are bold with it and you don't have a problem with being who you are. A lot of people have a problem with just shining their own light. They worry about what mm -hmm. others think. So before we get started, what I want to do is everybody knows and they see your name, Bama Manuel. Good evening, everybody. Share this live, share this live, especially if you know somebody who's timid, who's shy, who is just in a shell because they don't know how to be themselves. They may get blessed by this live tonight. So, uh, Bama, I would love for you to take a moment, and I'm going to pull some things from your Bible. Take a moment to tell us, take us back to that little boy and tell us a little bit about you back in Alabama and, uh, you know, how you were raised, a little bit about Bama and uh, Manuel. What's your, what's your real name? Okay, so my real name is Carl, actually, and I never say Carl at all, never. Um, and it's because I'm not a big fan of, you know how you have um, juniors, um, um, seniors and the third, and I don't think we should all have the same name. Even if we're adding um, the um, the endings to them, it still feel, I feel like I have your name. So my father's name was Carl. So it wasn't that I I just never use it. So I always say Manuel. Everybody see me, they know me. They say Manuel. And I picked up the Bama part from being from Alabama. My friends called me. Okay, let me go back. My friends called me Bam. But it was supposed to be Bama, but they got lazy. Oh, wow. You know how we cut things off in a minute? Yes. And it went from Bama to Bam. So it's like, bam, bam. So, um, but most people know me by Manuel. Um, so, yeah, growing up, yeah, the South, hey. <laughs> um, I didn't, as a child, I think, you know, you're trying to, like, find yourself and being around people from the South, you know, growing up in the church every week, Monday, choir rehearsal, Wednesday, Bible study. So, you know, when you're trying to find yourself, it can be hard because everyone else has already, they have this idea of who they want you to be. Right, right. When you're a child. So in, in most people's eyes, um, because I'm designed to be a certain way, it just then, as a child, they they were how do I say kind of confused by it because it's like oh wait a minute this is not a part of the design with what is going on here, so um, there was some um, but we're gonna try it and try to persuade this to be the actual design we're gonna push hard for you to be the design we want you to be, um, but you know I had never really had like a. Um, 
family issue about me. You know, they always said that you were gonna. My mom used to tell me all the time that I was gonna be different and things like that. Like I'm, ne I'm probably the only person who never got a, the opportunity to tell their mom that they were gay. It was just natural. Like she. So you were, you were a bisexual man as a child. You were bisexual yes. as a child. You rec when did you know this? Um. So, ah, so um. I used like I said, I used to date girls and things like that. Um, but it's like once I got to high school, it things kind of changed. You know, I thought this was attractive, but I still think this is attractive as well. So like, do I get? I want to play with everything. Like I'm, I'm in the mall and I want to shop everywhere. I, I want to play everywhere. So it's like, hey, I can just try this as well, and I'm gonna try it as well. And then hey, it it works for me. You know, That's my right. thing is, I always want to please other people, but the main thing, I'm pleasing me first. That's right. So did you have any sisters and brothers? Or do you yeah. have sisters and brothers? So basically, my mom had six kids. Um, one of my sisters was um, married a couple of decades ago um, in, um, in this place called Bellsman, Alabama. But I um, now just have um, three brothers, one a set, which is a twin, and I have one sister. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your sister passing away. And that's a part of your story in New York City. Mm -hmm. You actually opened a store and named it after your sister. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I, um, okay, so my sister was a very, very jazzy girl. Like, when they were in high school, they would wear skirts and heels. And they were such, I mean, it was like a, a flu of these ladies that were just you just you just wanted to see them when they walked in the room. And so they were very fashionable. And so when I got the opportunity to uh, open the store, I started online. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this online. I'm, I'm thinking about her. Every time I do something, I'm always thinking about her as, 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 as my model. So I'm like, oh, she will wear this. Now I can see her. And that's how I make a lot of my choices. Although I use... Um, depend on my friends for a lot of things just to keep me up there because I'm a man so sometimes you know you have to go to um, a woman's perspective when you're trying to um, run a, a, a business for women so um, I always think about her in the, in the in my mind so I end up opening up the store it was doing so good online I was like you know what I'm gonna give me a, a brick and mortar space okay so I end up opening the store up in Brooklyn um, so far so good it's just one of those things that um, I'm very proud of. Like, I can literally say that I did something amazing. This little country boy from Alabama came my way to New York City. Re he reinvented himself, and now he's doing amazing things. So how did you decide to go to New York City? Where did that come from? I, you know what happened? I was somewhere. I think I was at a conference in Atlanta, because at this time I was living in Atlanta. And I remember, I promise you, I was ear hustling like a motherfucker. Uh, I remember someone talking about this job opportunities and things in New York City. And and I would just listen to the, the amount of money. You know, I'm a little country, I'm in the South, so I'm listening to them. And I'm like, what a job? Hey, this kind of money, they don't got no, you know, in my head, that's what I'm thinking. And it was like, yeah, you just go apply here, that they'll do a Skype video and all this good stuff. And I was like, Da, 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 da. I went to the dialer, got on the AOL, I put everything in, and I applied for the job and got it. Wow. So you, you packed up, you moved, you didn't know anybody in New York City, you didn't know where you were going to live, none of that? I didn't know anything. He told me that I could rent a room, um, the guy that I did the interview with, um, Cordero, something like that. Um, he told me I could rent a room and don't worry, I'll be able to find a place in no time. And so I was all excited about it. So I just literally packed up everything. I had a hard heartbreak hotel sale in my house. Everything was a dollar. Like, get it, take it. Um, and then I just came on to New York City and I didn't tell anybody but two people that I knew that wasn't going to say anything because what I did not want to hear was why would you do that? Or right. uh, uh, does that make sense? Right. I'm going to allow you to say those things, but when you say them, I'm going to already be here. Right. You didn't want no dream killers. I didn't. Right. So I literally, when I got here, I called my mom, and the first thing she said was, well, baby, I, 
it's just I just can't reach out and touch you anymore. So I mean, I, that's the only thing. I mean, I'm proud of you, but I just it just as a mother, I'm not able to reach out and touch you so far now. Right. So it's like you know, I understand, but I had to do what was best for me. So I end up working. Um, this job on Fifth Avenue and just maneuvering to New York City because I'm a very adventurous person. Uh huh. I, I even travel about. I travel by myself, so it wasn't that I was gonna have a problem being here. Like I remember the first time I got here, I I wanted to get on the subway so bad. I got on the subway, just lost. What? How was that first subway experience when you got there on rush hour? Rush hour, doors oh. open, and you trying to get to see what was that like? I can only imagine. For someone from the South, yes, I, I <laughs> that is know. a horrible experience. Because <laughs> in my head, I want to say, what the, are you kidding? Like, I want to just go off and, and why, you don't have to touch me. Uh, what, wh why are you touching me? Like, I wanted to say, and I'm looking around the train. I'm like, well, everybody else is okay with it. So I guess I just, and they pushing and shoving. And I'm like, and this was way, this was like 13 years ago. Yes, yes, yes. I'm like, Yes. I was so yes. I was so outgunned to the fact that uh -huh, when I got off the train, I had said I was never going to get back on. I know. It's a lot because I, I remember when I, I attended school. I'm from New York. I'm a native. I oh. attended school in the South. And I took some children with me back to North, from North Carolina to New York because they wanted their <laughs> New York experience. And I took them to uh, down Church Avenue right there before, you know, 9-11. So I took them down there. Uh, by the World Trade Center and during rush hour. And they got on the train and it was like, you know, just to see all the people, like, it's amazing when them doors open, like the people coming out and the people going in, it's like, oh, snap. And I, it, it was like, oh my God, sardines. And they were like, wow. And they couldn't believe it. They, I was like, it's just like the movie. Like, it's yeah. really like this, you know. And then all the things downtown, you know, and 34th Street Underground, the music, the singing, the talent, they were like, wow, this is so cool. So, and that's when they were really selling things out there, you know, Harlem, 125th Street, they were really out there. They're not out there as much, but they're like, man. So let me ask you something. How was that first trip for you when you went down to the village? Um, <laughs> I know you love that. <laughs> I know you love that. So when I, you know what's funny? Um, mm, when I first went down to the village, I was like, oh, wow. This is a completely different world. <laughs> like, what? Oh, okay, just like that, huh? You so I had be, that. You can be yourself. Be free. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's just a really, really good time. But a year after I moved here, I end up going back into the field working as a social worker. And that's when I stopped go like going to the village because most of the people I would, I would speak to were people that either were clients of my other friends that worked with me or they were mostly clients and they always wanted to talk about stuff that I don't want to talk about after five o'clock. Right, right, right. <laughs> they treat, it, treat your, like that's your office or not to me. And I'm like, no, we cannot talk about this here, but... Uh, so wait a minute. So, so Mama. So I'm gonna call you Manuel if it's okay. So Manuel. So you are, were a social worker. I, I read in your bio where you built some furniture. You do some acting. You do a little bit of everything. So have you always been like this? Yeah, very outgoing. So let me tell you. And this is this is something I tell people all the time. Um, the hardest thing in the world is being an individual. Mm. Mm. But believe it or not, we are all born individually. That's right. We all are completely different. So it shouldn't be hard being an individual, but it's hard being an individual because you just, I don't confine to no one anything. Like I, mm, like I don't, I don't, I never follow, never. Being an individual, you just stand out. You can be your step, no, trust me. 70% of the people might like you and 70% of the people might not like you, but it's okay. And you don't worry about a, that. You, 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 you can't focus on any of that. You can't worry about any of that. So one of the things is I've always just been this person that's completely outgoing. 
I wanted to know how to do everything. See, I grew up in the South, and my grandma was very, very hands-on, and we used to stay in the Lowe's and the Home Depot and the Mazes. So I got accustomed to, to hey, oh, if I see it, I'm going to do it. I literally, my I made this handkerchief. Uh, my aunt, we had moved into this house that once before my aunt and their sisters, kind of like a family house, everybody just ended up living in. And in in this in the top of the cover thing, there was a basket with yarn in it, and it not yarn, but it's like the little needle threads, mm -hmm. needle point. And I saw an instruction, looked at it, and said, "Oh, I can't do that, but if I do it like this, it's gonna turn." Out. I'm gonna just count the the X's across each, and I made this beautiful. I needed this niche stitched this beautiful napkin and had this little polar, polar bear on it. And I gave it to my mom and she was like, you did that? That's what you was doing? And I was like, yeah. Wow. So and I always want to have talents. Yeah, yeah. I, and I have plenty of talents. There's yeah. nothing that I not, I don't like to say it's nothing that I cannot do, but there's nothing that I will not try not to do. So what are you most passionate about? Cause you also cook. I am. Uh, I'm. 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 Th I'm thinking I'm a chef. Um, okay. One of the things I love to do is cook. I'm talking about entertain. I I feel like I should have this nightclub, jazz club, or something where Ooh. I could just entertain people. All you know. I love to cook and entertain. Like I just love to do it so much. To it's just been like a, a part of me. I will have parties that last three days and nonstop, like 72 hours, like just to entertain, just to see people smiling, happy. I never had an altercation. Um, everyone has always been more respectful because of the people that I, I hang around with. I never yeah. really hung around with young people. Yes. Um, I, that used to get me in trouble when I was younger. I remember sitting on the porch one time and all the kids was outside in the yard playing and some was in the field and all that stuff. They were just playing. And I was sitting on the porch with the adults because I was, you know, we, I had already passed the, I, I need to go outside and play phase. I, I was done with that. I, I don't need to play anymore. I played enough. And I will, um, I remember my grandma said, um, Oh, the little one of my little nieces or cousins and somebody they wanted to play, and they was like, uh, "Uncle Carl, come run after me or something." So I ended up running behind them, and I failed. And man, you have had some of the, some of the most amazing legs ever. Um, I remember my grandma telling me, "See, that's what happened with grandpa play with kids," and it was something about that statement right there. After that, and now man, I'm like eight or nine probably. It was something about that statement stuck in my head, and I'm like, oh, so all of my friends have been older. I could be 20, they could be 80 or 75 or 50. Even right now, my group of guys, I'm the youngest in the group. And the reason is, because I know people say, oh, why, why would you just hang out with older? You should hang out with people. The thing is, when we were a child, when we were kids, we, did this, we made the same mistakes together. Mm -hmm. No one knew different. No one knew not to do this. You know, we we go, what you think? We're going to do it. We got to th think about it because we, we, we never did this before. But so if you have older friends who can tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, baby, mm -mm. I'd have been around the block a couple of times. I don't think you should even try to do that. But if you want to do it, then you go ahead. But I'm going to let you know it ain't work. It ain't work for me 10, 20 years ago. It ain't going to work for you right now. See, you got to have those kind of people in your ear to help you be an individual. Right. Right. So, so let me ask you a question. It's Pride Week. So with it being Pride Week and with it being a bisexual man, what message would you like to tell people about this week and your community? So um, it is actually Pride Month, but I, which I don't like because I don't feel like a month is enough time to um, celebrate us. So what they do is you see all the stores and all the agencies and the community, they they they, they focus on you because mm -hmm. it's your you. month. This is a selling point. I could sell you anything. I 
put a rainbow stamp on it. You're That's gonna right. come and patronize my business. Right. You're gonna That's do right. uh, just for this. I'm gonna do this for this one month because That's I right. know that there's a lot of money to be made. That's what it is. That's right. So in other words, it's a whole lot of money in this month. I know everybody going to patronize us and that's what they do. And so it bothers me that we spend so much money because the thing is when Converse take those rain after this month, guess what? Those shoes come out of that store. Wow. Target don't, that shirt, that hoodie is coming down. So beyond the, the month, what, what do you want people to know that I think we've come a long way. People have gotten a lot more respectful. They've accepted people. People give unconditional love to their children. A lot more people have come out. You know, when I came up back in the day as a baby boomer, people were in the closet. You know, they weren't so outward about their lifestyle. But in 2022, people are wide open. They don't hide anything. There's no shame in it. It's a different world we live in. So with where we are now and where we have come from, what are the positives and the negatives you see in that? Well, you, so the positive, like what you just said, now more people are able to be out and be themselves. So that's always going to be like the, the biggest positive. Now um, there's more rights for um, gay rights. It, it shouldn't never say, in, in that, it should never be like a gay rights thing or because Human rights, if you have human rights, then why do we need gay rights? Human there rights is human rights. That's the way that's I right. see it. Um, right. And that, to me, was like one of the negative things. They keep saying, oh, these are gay rights. Or um, uh, um, you guys, now y'all, a bum let y'all get married. And I'm like, wait a minute, but you, ain't you been falling in love? And I said, right. ain't. Like, right. did you not put your, put your vows on a piece of paper? And even though I don't, believe in the idea of the marriage part that's just me um and that's because that's how I, my religion would taught me so i don't believe in the marriage, but i do believe in the partnerization of something it don't have to necessarily be called marriage but the fact that we have to have separate rights to me is a problem you know um we i'm glad that people are more out um you're able to have these conversations with your families um um, families are taking their friends and neighbors to these amazing events where they'll have to be, you know, sad or ashamed or anything like that. Now, I, I was looking at your bio, you know, you've just done so much. Uh, I want to backtrack for a minute. So you were on MasterChef? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, uh, I yeah. So I auditioned for, uh, and, and I'm going to tell this story. I guess I can say this without breaching any paperwork. Um, when I first, I, I, this is my second time auditioning. Um, mm -hmm. The very first time I auditioned, you guys would not believe this. I didn't say anything. Like I was, thank you, uh, quiet. Yes, I was quiet. Wow. And so because of that, they sent me uh, right on packing. And my friend, <laughs> so you didn't my, show them your full personality. Nothing, because I didn't know. Because I'm young and uh, I didn't know. I had never done anything like this. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't have no pointers or anything. I just jumped up the day before, got everything prepped, and I went and did it. And my friend told me I will never forget. He was like, "Oh, good." If you ain't saying nothing good, because you got too much personality, they would love to have you. So if you didn't, good. And I was like, what? Hold on. And so I actually said, you know what? Next year, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to be ready. And this time, when I went back, um, which was a year, um, uh, a season ago, um, I went in there, and I remember the girl sitting next to me, oh, they're going to pick you because they like you. They really like you. And I was like, child, we all forget our bags and go home. And that's literally what they told us. Bye. And then I got a phone call a month later. And I was like, huh? What? <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I'm over here in this hospital. I just took, uh, tore my muscles or uh, vessels or something. So now I got rib ribomyalis ribomyalysis. I'm in the hospital and they're calling me, talking about something. And they were so nice and so amazing. Like, 
anything I needed while I was there. They wanted to make sure I was okay. This was before they had, you know, flew us out to LA. So, so what would you tell somebody that is preparing to go for audition since you didn't know and you were shy and you were quiet? What would you tell somebody that's getting ready to go out and do that now ahead of time so that they would not go in there and do what you did? Yeah, so the main thing is to go and be your 100% authentic self. Oh, when I tell you don't shy, if you're one of those people you like to sing every time you open your mouth and sing a word, do that. If you laugh because you think everything is funny, whatever your personality is, do that. Because what, what I found out about TV is they always want to have this different personality. Just because you might think it's different, that's why you are individual. That's because you might think that people don't want to hear it. Trust me, there's always somewhere for a different personality on um, uh, reality TV or in movies or anything. Just do not try to go and confine yourself and be what other people want you to be. Don't Your design is your design. So I would tell them be be 100% their authentic self because that's what they're looking for. It doesn't matter how you cook, how you look, anything like that. If it's a, whatever show you is, you're going on. It doesn't matter what you're there actually auditioning for. It's going to always be about your personality. Right, because some people make people feel like they're doing too much. But mm -hmm. you're never doing too much. You just maybe they're just basic and they don't understand. But you should mm -hmm. always just shine your light and go in there and don't dim your light for somebody else. You know, right? Never. The thing is, like I say, people want us to be and do a certain thing all the time. That you would never get in your life as much as you want to. You would never get the opportunity to please everyone. Right. And I know people say that's like a cliche, but it's just, just one of those things. But as long as you've been yourself, you know that at the end of the day, you didn't you did not you did not transform into anybody else. You was always yourself. And that will always be able to be it should be. It should be pleasing to the self. If nothing else, you know at the end of the day, you went through this day being yourself and you didn't have to please or do anything for anyone because you was doing everything for self and it's okay to do for self. Wow. So, Bam, what if there's somebody watching you that they have, you have a social background and they're going through some tough times right now. They want to try to do a few things. They have a couple endeavors they want to try. Maybe it's acting, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's doing some of the things you did, sewing, opening up a business. Uh, what would you tell them with your social background? to get out of their head, how would you advise them to get out of their head and just go ahead and take a leap of faith and try? Well, the thing is, the this, self, this thing called the self-conscious mind <clears throat> uh, is more powerful than what we, 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 we don't know it to be. Um, my thing is, I do a lot of things. Like, I, I just don't care. I just do a lot of things because I want, want them to work. Right. I just really want something to work. And as, as long as you have the ability and the capability of doing whatever it is that you want to do, you should always do it until at least you are satisfied that one of those ideas work. Don't hold off. Don't wait to the last minute. Don't let it pass you by. If you are capable and able to do it, I don't care if it's 500 things at one time. If your body, your mind, your spirit, and your soul will allow you to do those 5,000 things, then you should do it. Do not wait. We, we don't live in a time anymore where we can say, I'll wait. Or I got to wait on. Or... I'm gonna give it some more time and some more thought. Some more thought. We don't live in that time anymore. We have seen millions of people die within the last two years, and you think we're in a time where we have to wait? In this moment, no matter what, you should do everything you can do that you're capable and able, and mostly mentally ready to do. So now, I know that you're a person. You don't conform to nobody else. You you you're your own individual. But you went through a process. And you had a surgery. Yes. Tell us about that decision. How did that come about? I think you, you lost, what, over 100 pounds or more? And, and how was that process? And take us through that journey. 
So what happened was, so when I, so just by the way, I've always been a very petite young man. And I'm talking about, if you, if you go back over my social media, you'll see that I've always just been this petite um, young man. However, coming to New York City in a city that you don't know anybody, you still need to learn, you don't know what a hole in the wall, where you get you some moonshine, like you don't know none of the stuff that you want to know to, so that your life can be as enjoyable as possible. I, I end up indulging in a lot of food. Like I would, from the South, I would cook these meals. And every time a new Lifetime movie came on, I had a plate. Wow. <laughs> so you were an emotional eater. I was emotionally, yes, I was emotionally eating. And I just became so thick and, and, and large. I wasn't like this. I was big, but I was, I tried my best to um, do everything in my power to make what I thought my body said I was look good. And it was so much negative um, things that came along with it. One, when you live, when you're a thick guy and you're in the best eye community, yeah, some people can, some of the, the regular guys can feel some kind of way. And um, they might try you. Bullying? Um, so you mean they were bullying you to a degree? Not, not necessarily bullying. Um, there, there have been some that would get mad just because of the, the, the effect. Nothing wrong, and you didn't. Then they have. There's many that want to want to know more. Okay. You know, um, we we never. I've never been a type of person like kiss and tell. But growing up in any neighborhood, I've always had more. What we could we would consider straight guys attracted to me than anything. And so, 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 so Bama, I know we can talk about your surgery, but when you say that, so that, that makes me think, and I'm sure a lot of people listening. So what you're telling me is that there's a lot of straight men who dip and dab. Oh yeah. That's, I mean, but you know what? Cause I was, that was leading up to my surgery. The point was I had got so thick and it was conform. They was, com they saw this image and I could be walking down the street and I haven't turned, turned around and, Nine times ten, I probably had long hair dreads or something like that. And literally, it's like, hey, little mama, or uh, hey. And I'm like, what? Who? Who? Me? I, but that's, I had got too big. And my body looked like, the, like a woman body. And I just wasn't satisfied with that. And this is how the weight journey started. And then the you're going to be uh, diabetic. Um, your sugar levels are this. Um, this blood pressure is out of control. And I'm like, wait a minute, what is all of this stuff? What? Wow. And it all had to do because of weight. I could lose the weight and I, nah, nothing is wrong. Pick the weight back up. I literally had three liposuctions before I even had the, the, the final surgery, which was the gastric sleeve, I, I've had three liposuctions because I want to make sure that I always looked it decent. Wow. So if anybody's considering that procedure, would you recommend it? Um, I, I will only recommend it. Uh, so for any kind of um, um, body change, um, any time, permanent, permanent body change, let me say that way. Um, anytime you do anything like that, I would always say you have to and you must consult with a, um, a psychiatrist or therapist. And the reason being is this, you're altering your body forever. You're getting rid, I don't care if you want to go get breasts or you want to add to your breasts or whatever it is that you want to do. You're making a, 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 a lifetime alteration to your body that you cannot get you cannot fix. So that's the first thing I would tell people uh, to pay attention to. And then the other thing is, the very first question that you would be ever asked is, do you know, what do you know about the surgery? And the main thing is that you can die. That's the second mm. thing you need to know. You can get on that table and you can die. So as long as you know those two things and you understand those two things, now you can move forward to what side effects can be. And if, if you're not comfortable with the side effects, like if you're not comfortable with, with having acid reflux or you're not comfortable with, um, having a hard time to swallow and you can't eat as much as mo most people you can sit at a restaurant and you might don't eat but two spoons of food are you if you're not comfortable with that then that's mean that's something you might want to think about before you move forward because you just know your body's not going to allow you to do something or if you're not 
you, you're not comfortable with eating and you knowing that you have to wait at least 34 minutes before you have a, something to drink behind it, then this might not be. So you have to think, once you get the, the mental health and the, the, the first part out, then you think about what side effects going to be there. Like if you're going to have um, SS skin and stuff like that, and you, you know in the end you're not going to be comfortable with that, then that's how you decide whether you want to move forward with it. Now, will this, service, will this surgery help your life? It, it helped mine to the fullest to know, to see uh, human global A1C numbers go from 18 back down to 2.2 where they belong. Like to see wow. something amazing like that, yeah, it, it, it works. But it's the side effects you need to consider and the reason why you're doing it. And the blood pressure went back down too. I know somebody uh, that happened to. I actually know uh, my uncle's uh, stepdaughter. She went for the procedure and she passed away, so she didn't make it. So, what is the percentage when they tell you that that can happen? Is it like fifty-fifty when somebody does that? As far as them not making it? Well, you know what? I so I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to say my doctor to anybody. Um, he's just amazing. Um, the question that I asked was. Have because you ever I lost anybody? Think, have you ever lost anyone? Right. And because they didn't, wow. um, I felt more, uh, I felt satisfied with that. Because right. I do right. know, like I said, the main thing is you need to know that this procedure can kill you. Ooh. The other thing is I allowed the robot to do my procedure. The robot? So a doctor didn't do the procedure, a robot did it. So explain that. What do you mean a robot did your procedure? For those, I, I mean, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I know what a robot so, is, but I mean, so they have robots that do procedures with hands, instead of the doctor? With, wow. They they put this robot in your body, and it goes in, and it just nip, nip, cut, cut, suck, suck, pull everything out. Um, wow. And it does the procedure for you. And it's a new, um, it's not, it's, it's, it's not new, new, but it's, 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 um, it's now being used more. Wow, that's good. So how often do you have to go back to follow up? So I did. So ideally, you're going to go at least three times a year. Um, in the beginning, of course, you're going to go to two weeks after the surgery because they just want to make sure everything is okay. And there's a lot of um, procedures you would do before you even have the surgery, by the way, just to make sure that you are a candidate for the surgery because they don't want to hit arteries and heart. If you have heart issue problems already, sleep apnea, things like that, they need to know in advance. Um, and so um, they're going to know all of that from the start. Um, but then the, the, what I could say, I just lost my thought. Well, why are you thinking about your thoughts? So you have a big milestone coming up in August. Yeah. Yes, I am going to be uh I, I forty years old. Big, I'm going to be forty years old. Wow. You don't look it. So that's excellent. What you gonna do? What's coming up? What you, you having a party? Do I need to come so, to New York City? Cause the way listen, so I'm party. definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna send an invite out to um everyone. I I always get every, I like to entertain. So I am going to have an all-white party. Um, it's going to be rooftop. The idea is that we can have a live band, but it's just going to depend on space. Um, but I, I, this time I want a live band. I, I don't want to do the food myself. I, I, want, to, I want it to be catered this time. Uh, normally, I always do the food. I, you know, I bought all these shaper dishes and things like that because I like everything to be yes, yes. set up really, yes. really, really nice. And I'd be mm -hmm. so uh, not saying, and my friends get on me all the time, not saying that someone else is going to do something wrong. It's just, I just like, I'll do it. Do you need help? No. You so you got no. a location? You have a location you want to do that? Yeah, I'm going to do it at my home. Um, okay. I live, I, live um, I, I, I was successful enough and able and, credit was decent to be able to move um, in the heart of the city. Uh, right now, I moved from Brooklyn about five years ago, and I moved to this spot. And so it's such an amazing spot to have that city skyline. And Oh, um, nice. Uh, uh, it's just amazing to see you have the Hudson River and Ooh, you um, all, okay. uh, all of these wonderful things. Drive or somewhere in that area? Yeah, so that, I'm that in... sounds like that area. Yeah, I'm in... Um, so, like, I'm four blocks from Times Square. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a very nice 
it's just the bill. Like right now, when they do the fireworks later on, if they have not done them yet, I think maybe 10 o'clock, they probably, 10 or 11 o'clock, uh, you'll be able to see like the fireworks and stuff like that without having to leave the house and things like that. It, 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 it comes out really, really good, especially at night. It's those hot summer days that I just don't like being up there. Wow. Well, tell us something that people don't know about Bam Emanuel. We see you out here, your vibrations, your live, you know, you always have a uh, happy spirit and everything like that. Are you ever down? Are you ever sad? Because we don't see that side of you. What? <laughs> I've learned to camouflage. Ah. Um, you know what's funny is that... Um, Believe it or not, I'm more sadder than anything. Um, be, so I work all the time. I work, I'm a social worker in the daytime. I'm a foster care social worker in the daytime. And I'm running the boutique when I get off of that job. I don't have any employees. So I'm doing everything by myself. Then still trying to find the time to entertain and um, be a part of my little group with my friends. I want to make sure I'm always there for the boys and they're there for me and things like that. So I want to give them time. Plus I have my nieces and nephews who... I have to just check in because they want to hear. They got to hear from me, my sister. My... So I'm always busy. And it comes a time when you lay down and you just cry. Well, you, you know what? Yeah, yeah, so crying is good. You're a social worker, so I guess you, you can't go talk to nobody. So you kind of hold it in. Yeah, well, I, 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 I just started therapy myself. Um, and it's because of trying to hold everything in or trying to do everything by myself i i watch movies now and i never thought i would be the person i watch movies now and i just cry like <laughs> i'm like wait no, so you know what? I, that's okay it's okay to show feelings sometimes men think they can't cry like it's okay to be human yeah but see i i'm and i and i know that um the thing is, I cried so much growing up as a kid, you know, because I just wanted more. I've always wanted more and more and more. Nothing that, not that anything was hard or anything like that. I just wanted more. So I always cried, like, to myself when I when something wasn't working out or I, if I, I would go through something like that. And I said when I got older that the crying was going to be done. But the more, the more success you get, the more you work hard, the more you put your efforts in everything you do, the more sadder you become because you're still trying to work and you're trying to see your your product or whatever it is, you're trying to see it manifest. You have I have a lot of crying nights. Wow. And so I'm from the I'm from the South. And so, you know, I'm Baptist and stuff like that. So you know you put the wrong song on you. Uh oh. You, so I, I started listening to jazz. So that way I don't wow. have to hear the words. <laughs> Literally. So you miss your family too. You probably miss your family. I oh my god! The, you know the hardest thing in the beginning. Now, the hardest thing in the beginning was that you this social media. It, I tell you something. It it could be a the worst thing ever. The hardest thing in the beginning was when I would see them at like a bar barbecue backyard cookout with the red cups, and Aww. I wasn't there. Yeah. That was the hardest thing ever. And I would see it all the time because somebody was birthday this, somebody birthday there. Oh, we all went there. And I was like, oh my God. I just the only thing I would say is the hardest part is not being able to at the, you know, early in the early days, not being able to be there. And so that stuff would make you sad. I I really get sad. Like I'm a very emotional person. So remember, have they come and seen the store? Yeah. So, so um my so I got a chance to uh my brother brought his entire family for Christmas um Aww. a year ago and it was probably one of the most amazing things because I haven't had a, a, I always put up trees because I'm a big Christmas tree. The stuff they do on these trees now I used to do in my early days, like literally. Wow. I was just, I'm just so stunned that when I was eighteen doing this, now here it is. I'm in my late thirties and people are now just doing these things. So it was just amazing. It's always amazing to see Christmas trees. But to have my family here and my little nieces waking up to Christmas and they mom and was like, why would you go buy all this stuff? I'm like, because it's Christmas. I know you said one, two gifts, but it's Christmas, child. We've been there. They're going to open up some gifts. Like, I want to see paper all over the floor. So I was as, as very excited for that. Um, they're all coming for my birthday, which I'm very excited about. Oh, nice. Um, a lot of my, some of the women that I used to grow up with, um, 
they're like I said, everybody was always older. So a lot of my um, classmates and, and, and friends and things like that, they're going to be here for the party. That's why, not only because it's my 40th, because so many people are coming, I want to make sure it's extra, extra, extra special. Well, let me ask you this question. I got to go back, and I want to I appreciate you being so candid and so transparent, but you said something earlier I got to go back to. You said a lot of straight <laughs> men, a lot of straight men come on to you. And I know there's some women out there, and I know we we don't always recognize signs. So can you tell the ladies out there that might want to know, like, how to recognize if you might be dealing with a man who is uh, on the down low? Okay, so that's the thing. Mm, 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 mm. Um, there's no, because you people, I would, I would say, well, is they, is they, there's really no signs or anything because and and I and I had to tell this to some other girlfriends of mine. I don't. There's no. There's first of all. There's no eye or no special care. I don't own a special characteristic where I can just look and say, "Hey, oh, that might be someone." I don't think no one possesses that actual characteristic. So I don't think there's no signs. Cause and I never would kiss and tell, but I would tell this whether you're heterosexual or whatever you are that. If the signs in your heart don't add up, mm. then you should trust that. Trust your instincts. Yeah, because nine times out of ten, whether you're female, male, it, you know what it is. Is if we would stop defining um, um, sexuality and gender. If we would stop trying to put those two together and right. literally separate them, th we would be in a better position. So me meaning, the most amazing people in the world to me are married people. Because my thing is, how do you stay together with this one person for so long? It's cool, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's, they get my hats go off, and I, and I and I bought some good hats this week. Um, Cause the thing is, most human beings want to explore. Yeah. Whether they say it out loud or whether they um, um, express it, most human beings want to explore, man and female. It's not just a male thing. Well, another male looking at another male. First of all, when you're in the South, everybody walk around the South got big asses like women. Hey. And wow. you know these, these guys are putting on all of these jogging pants and stuff like that. And so if you walk down the street, like I used to get all the time, and they don't they only see you from the back because we have the, we have defined that the male um trait is that we're supposed to be all in tune with big thick asses and stuff like that. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So if you're walking down the street from the back and I see a big ass, not knowing if you male or female, I'm as a male, I'm supposed to be somewhat turned on or in tree. So oh, wow. Normally, that's what happens. And then you say, oh, shit, that's a man. But now, the idea can stop there. Or you can feed on whatever that is that you're feeding and push it a little further. And most of the time, they will push it a little further. Oh, man, I thought you was, oh, all right, what's up? Shit, you cool. Are you, wait a minute. Oh, so you still want to continue this conversation? The attraction. Yeah. So in other words, they, they go with the attraction. And they it's just, just an, with the it's just an that's all it is. But that's male or female. There are females who are can look at another woman married and everything and say, oh my God, she's absolutely beautiful. I'm, especially with all the pancake 95 they got out there now and that makeup. They looking amazing. So it's not that it's, it's, it, it's just not, the sexuality just did not define gender to me. That's right. That's true. I agree with that. Because one, I'm not supposed to know what you're doing behind your behind closed doors. So I could judge you because of what you're doing behind closed closed doors. But I can judge you for your character, who you who you are now. And that's why I've been able to get along with most people because I never changed. This this is a mask that I, I've been wearing all my life. It never it has never changed. And that's so that's so cool. That's what people need to know. You find a way to be yourself and. Be happy with yourself and don't worry about nobody else because, you know, 
you you have to live with you. I mean, at the end of the day, otherwise, like you said, you have those nights where you just cry yourself to sleep. You know, uh, so you are acting now. Do we need to be looking for anything coming up in the future with you and your acting? Oh, well, you know, I always keep my hands in the pies. You know how. You know, so you know what I, I found out, and I see people do it all the time, and I was like, oh, most time, as much as you want to talk about how amazing or uh, what, what amazing things you got coming on, nine times out of ten, because of some, a piece of your know, Jan Han card on a piece of paper, it tells you not to. But you just want to rejoice. I remember when I was um, getting ready for MasterChef, you couldn't tell anybody. Wow. And I was like, oh. I got to call somebody. So it's one of those things where they they have in this, and, and now I understand why when I when they say, well, can you tell about the up and coming movie? And they're like, child, you got to watch it. You just can't really talk about the the things that you want to, but just know I'm always always um, available, and I'm always trying to do more. So if I'm doing something now, that means there's something else coming. I, I, I'm gonna always stay busy. So do 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 you want to let the people know how they can reach you if somebody's looking for a actor or if they need a personal chef? I mean, what services are you available for hire for for people? And then also let them know where your store is and the location and the hours and what you have at the store. Well, I would like for you to take the time right now to kind of let people know how they can reach you and what it is that you're available for if they're interested in contacting you and hiring you for anything. Okay, so um, first thing first, we will always start with the store. Um, the name of the store is Nikita's Boutique. We're located at 262 Halsey Street, Brooklyn, New York, New York, 11216. Um, the hours are, I'm off on Sundays and Mondays. We're closed on Sunday and Mondays. And the hours are because of me working. Um, I have to go to work first and then I'll do the store last. Uh, I try to work at least from 6 o'clock to 11, 6 o'clock p.m. to 11 p.m. Sometimes we do go over if we're having um, sip and shop nights. So we will go over. We provide these services there is free alterations for any garment inside of the store. You do not have to pay to have something to be altered to make it look good for you, the wow. individual. Um, so we do provide those services. We also provide styling services. So for instance, you, if you like the young lady that was upstairs who came down in her pajamas and she just needed something to wear to work and she wanted us to style her, we do do personal styling, and that's not free of charge as well. As so you do makeovers? You do makeovers? They come uh, in one believe way it or not, believe it or not, I am a makeup artist, and I have stylists as well, but I do not do those things now. It's just like drama. So I try to stay away from drama. I always try to stay away from drama. Um, so, yeah, and, and also, if you are a... Um, you are um, a TV production and you, you guys need to rent a space. Um, my boutique is available for renting for um, any kind of movie or uh, commercials or TV ads or any kind of promotion that needs to be done and you need a boutique style store to do it. Um, and last but not least, I um, if you are a um, um, wardrobe art artist or um, floor run or whatever, and you guys need to pull items, we do allow you to come and pull items as well. We just have to talk about other things in the process with that. Okay. So what, uh, what, size, what size do you have in your store? Who do you cater to as far as so, women? Because I believe that women are all, not just women, I just, like I said earlier, everybody's such an individual. I try to go from extra small up to a 6X. Okay. Okay. And we um we try to make sure we're catering to everybody. Like someone, I always say there's something in there for you. Just come in, and we're not expensive at all. Um, as far as cooking go, oh, and you can reach us. Uh, like I say, if you Google Nikita's Boutique, uh, all the information will come up for that. Um, and they can the, order online too. And they can you can order online. online. Yeah, you definitely can order online right now. I'm doing getting ready for so we're getting ready for this the two year anniversary so the website has been down because of all the sales we have 
have we've been having sales on top of sales that's not on the website and so what happens is it throws the inventory off so i literally shut the website down so that the inventory wouldn't be off uh, make it what that means i don't want you to purchase something that might be already gone because of the sales that we're having inside inside of the store but the anniversary is Ju well actually the anniversary is july because that's when we open in july but the we might we're gonna have something really really big in August during my birthday because we opened the grand open was on my birthday two years ago. So excellent, excellent. And so last question in regards to the store, uh, do you have an Instagram page or anywhere they can for the store? Yes. So we do have an Instagram page. It is uh, Nikita's Boutique. Uh, um, is that how you spell it? Somebody put it in there so, so I can. Is that how you spell it? Oh uh, no, it's it's N A K E T A S. Retype that for me, Miss Diggs, please. N A K. Say, spell it again, please. N A K E T A S. Okay. And that you have an Instagram page for that. Yes, we have Instagram. N A K. Okay. T A S. So we would definitely like to support that. And see, now again, he created the store. He moved from Alabama because his sister was killed, and he he opened the store in honor of his sister. You know. Uh, he was moved by his sister and her fashion taste and her ability to style, and he wanted to continue that legacy on behalf of Nikita. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's support that. If you can imagine what that's like for a brother to leave Alabama and to, to go and go to a whole new place just to build a dream around leaving a legacy for his sister. I can only imagine how your mom felt when you did that, when she really realized what you did. That's a beautiful thing. I have to tell you, that's really, really sweet. You know, I, I can only imagine how close you and your sister was. And I'm so sorry to hear that she was murdered like she was. But I hope that this gives you so much joy. And I hope that this continues to, to grow. And I hope that you find other ways to continue to let people know who she is. Do you have a picture in the store? Yeah, so I so if you go to the page, I use her pictures and everything. Um, oh, nice. Um, my um, friend actually bears two pictures. If you ever see me on live and I have like these two uh, pictures behind me, uh, my friend did two art pictures that I have in the living room. So they're these, these huge pictures that I have of her, one when she was a little girl and one in her final uh, adult life. So I do have those. But I do use her a lot for a lot of marketing and uh, promotion as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. And anything that you would like the people out here on Instagram or other places, because this will be played in other places, to know about Manuel in regards to who you are, what you stand for, and anything that you want to say to the people about anything. It's your time. Okay. So, that is correct spelling now, the N-A-K-E-T-A is. Um, well, the one thing I will say that um, I would tell people, the first thing I would say is do not prejudge who I am. Do not assume. Uh, I'm the type of person that you don't have to prejudge me and you don't have to uh, assume anything about me because I'm so transparent anything you want to know, I will actually tell you. So do not prejudge me and do not assume. Um, the other thing is I will always 100% be an individual. I do not want to be like anyone. I have no desire to, uh, you might inspire me. I, if I'm inspired by you, then okay. Um, if you do something that I like, then okay. But uh, I don't pretend or I don't try to be anyone else. I think we all should learn how to just be ourselves. Um, the other thing is, uh, if we meet and you know you hang around me and stuff like that, I, I, I'm gonna treat you as I would any of any friend. So I'm going not to sugarcoat anything. I'm not gonna lie to you about anything. I try to be in this day and time. I try to be straightforward about everything. Um, I believe that. We all could be amazing people if we just be our 100% authentic self 
without trying to conform or, or be something else and be truthful. So I'm a very truthful person. And if you can't deal with that, I might not be a good person for you to be around. Um, like I say, I don't follow trends or anything like that. I am my own. It's a lot of shit I just don't know how to do. And it's not because I don't want to do. It's just, it's just not my life. As you guys know, social media is a very, 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 very hectic traffic jam. Woo! It's the most hectic traffic jam. You know, people say, oh, I don't know how y'all sit in traffic all day. No, I don't know how you do social media all day because the worst thing ever is social media. So don't let social media define or put you in a category where you do not need to be. Mm. Don't be a follower. You cannot right. let nobody convince you to be or do something that you know you should not be doing from the first start. Like, always be yourself. Do not follow people. And don't let anybody supervisor screen don't let anybody talk less of you or talk you down from your stance or anything like that you stand on everything that you are as an individual no matter what as an uh, as adults we can go and talk about the 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 differences later but and in in those moments you stand and you stand on yourself 100 percent I will always stand on myself 100% until I realize that something is wrong. And as an adult, I can say, hey, maybe that was not the way or now that I see it this way. You know, I always stand 100%. And like pride is not about rainbows and stuff like that. Pride is about each individual. We, we, we are all, we have pride in everything we do. That's why it's such a family thing now which I love and I love to see all the people get out for this day, this month and celebrate. But pride should be an everyday thing. Every morning you should be up, you get up, you should be proud of yourself if no one else. And you know what? <laughs> I have to say, I have to say anybody, everybody that I know that is uh, in that community, they are free. They are free. You know what I'm saying? Like people who are heterosexual, they are uptight. Most people who are bisexual, lesbian, whatever you want to call them, whatever title you want to give them, whatever lifestyle they live, if it's not the norm, what you want to call you know, man and woman together, they are free, happy, and they are just living their best life, most of them, unless they are hiding, unless they are still trying to figure themselves out. But those who understand who they are, they don't let nothing phase them. They don't let you phase them. They don't care what you think about them. They are just going about their life. And everybody needs to learn that about them. That's the one thing that I've always seen. And I said, man, that's the one takeaway that I get from the that community is that everybody yeah, yeah. is just free. They just free. They, 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 no, no change holds me. And I can only imagine now in 2022, because back when we came up, like I said, everybody was in the closet. So now they're even more free. Yeah, it, it's just the idea that now people understand. Um, yeah, so this is the same guy that I uh, I use as my lawyer, my doctor, my, my 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 the bus driver, the coach, the lady at the house. This is the same lady from the school, the library. The, the believe it. Oh, so these are just regular people. Oh, wait a minute. So all this time, I just found out that they were just regular people who have put in so much in this world just like everybody else so now i understand that's all that's happening the, yes. the people are now understanding that these are just regular people we right. keep trying to define people by their sexuality and we should not just gender that's should right. not be defined by what i do in my bedroom that's right that's right. And, and to be honest, if you want to do it, do whatever you want to do as an adult. You do whatever you want to do in your bedroom. You shouldn't hold back on anything. Life is not promised, and people just need it's to not. be happy. They need to be happy and do what it is that you want to do. Man, I, and I don't thank you. I thank and you. And and don't stop. Listen, don't don't. I, I, I so I don't like dreams. Somebody you said something about a broken world. Broken, you, don't like broken, um, you don't like dreams. You don't like. You don't like. I don't like dreams. Chasing, you don't like chasing a dream. Well, mm, I don't like dreams. I don't like dreams. I, I don't. I like dreams because dreams is when people get up and they, they dream about it and then they say, "Oh, you know, I had a dream last night and it was so amazing. It was so good." And that's the end. <laughs> but you are a visionary. I mean, you you 
You are a dreamer, though. You a dreamer. I, I'm going to go get her. You will go get her. You go get her. But you started. You probably had a dream or a thought. I had a thought. There you go. I had a thought. It, wasn't a, it was a thought. For me, it would be the thoughts. Those thoughts are amazing. If I think about it and I feel like I can do it, and I know I should do it, even if I don't feel like I can really do it, I should just give it a try. So there's I, not I, much difference between a person who has a thought and a person who has a dream. Some people just dream and they visualize it from start to finish and then they go and they do it too. But then I think you're saying that you think that some people dream but they never act. Is that what you mean? No, they, they treat it just what it is, a dream. Oh, that was nice. Okay. You never... You never I, I understand that was your happy moment, and you and you enjoyed that moment. Those that dream made you feel good and really. But you don't. You need to take them. Some of them same dreams that you keep on dreaming. It's the reason why you're having a dream in the first place. They say day job, boo, or random or whatever. But you're having that dream because that's that's your plan right there. Yes, Even right, though you didn't yes. write it down or anything like that, yes. you're having that. So now let's turn this dream into a thought. Yes. That we can proceed on. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, dreams are hard, but they just sit there and you get in your way. You, most people, it just we just let them sit there. They, we lose, we, you, you were sitting down at work, I know, and you had a good dream last night. Now you all crump and happy and ready to go to work again. You're good to go. Because of your dream, that moment, it was great. It was amazing. But you left it right there. And you had it again and again. And you keep leaving it right there. Perceive with it. That's all I'm saying. That's why I don't like dreams. A lot of people don't perceive with them. They don't. And yes, some of them are bad. That's just letting you know about other stuff you need to be aware of too. You know, they let you. The dreams let you know about everything. But some of those dreams you should perceive with, and you'll believe or not believe or not, you'll come up with all these ideas. The guy said to live in New York City, you have to be a hustler. Mm. To and live in New York City, you just have to. You just have to be. You know, you have to be, and you are always becoming. In New York, because there's so much opportunity. It's the city that never sleeps. I mean, and if you are a person that has, you know, that that is just up, you know, outgoing, you want something to do all the time, that's a great place to be. I love the fact that I'm a New Yorker, born and raised. I think everybody should go there one time, visit, one time. experience, experience that. You know, New York City experience, places like Las Vegas, certain places you should all go to to really understand, you know, and uh, visit the projects. You know, if you've never been to Harlem, if you've never been to the Bronx, if you've never been to Brooklyn, you know, bed stop, do a thigh, you know, all those Always. different places. A lot of people don't understand, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot growing up in New York City. It really yeah. is. It makes you a well-rounded person. You could survive if you came out of the streets of Project. If you came out of New York City, you could survive quite a bit. Not taken away from places like Chicago, the Windy City, and Detroit, and some other places, but something about New York City, it's, it's a hustle and bustle, it's a speed, it's something, it's something about New York City. You, you know what it is? You know what it is, and I tell people all the time, um, you might, if you, if I don't care if you don't never get the opportunity to travel the world, the entire world, never get the opportunity to go places you always have a desire to go and meet different people. All don't worry about any of that if you don't never get the opportunity because all of that is here in New York City and that's what makes New York City. It's cultural. Yeah. It's, it's, it has. There's not no. Um, type of identity that you would not find here in New York City. Um, you don't China. have to travel the world. Everything is here. Yeah. That's the thing. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that to say don't go and travel to other places, but the, the New York City being a sanctuary state, it's just everyone flee to New York City because everybody wants to be a part of this New York City. Everybody wants a peace. Anybody who wants anything in life for the most part always, always make a detour to New York City for something, if yeah. nothing else. Yeah. If they never. feel like they have it. If you notice, New York City is one of those places where if you say, child, I went to New York City, New oh child, you the people get excited about it. You don't get you don't hear people getting excited because they say they went to Utah. It's a reason why New York City is the way it is because because of its culture. I've yes. never seen so many different types of people. Yes. 
Yeah. At first, I wanted to say, where am I? Because I'm from the South. All that we saw was two or three different types of people. You Chinatown. Know, but, you've been to Chinatown, right? That first oh, time you Chinatown, you're like, woo. I thought I was in a, I thought I was literally in China. I, you know, ain't no Chinatown, no Alabama. Shit, ain't no town. I'm talking about Chinatown. But the fact of the matter is, when you <laughs> see something different, it grows on you. And every day I would walk down this, I would walk down the street and I would pl be playing um, swing music in my ear with my headphones. And it just gives you this idea of you can just, ah, it just, it just boosts your confidence. I, I, now I don't like going into the, in, into the square and stuff like that because of, you know, you, you, you do so much of that, but to have that experience and it's your first time, I just can, I can only imagine how, my other friends and family when they come for my birthday who had never been yeah. here before. I can't wait to see that the light. Look. Yeah, 34th the, the, Street when they walk down there at night and see the people dancing on the street and all that stuff underground. I mean, it's amazing. I Ladies can't wait for them to see you. Yes. Well, I just want to thank you for sharing who you are and just sharing your story. You know, I know I've heard other things. I've heard you talk about other things. I know you got a baby on the way, but I know you said you don't want to talk about that. So that's why I didn't touch on that because I respected that. Because I, I just, you. I've heard you with certain interviews with other people, you know. But I want people to know the other side of you. Story time is a place where people come and they just let people see who they are beyond what we know out here on Instagram. You know what I mean? The, the human side of individuals, you know. And uh, you're beautiful people. You have a beautiful soul. And I just was so touched by what you did for your sister. And I really want everybody, who, if you come back and you watch the story, please go look up the store. Purchase something online. Because the fact that he took his heart and he put it out there and he did what he did for his sister, that's special. That's real special. And uh, we need to support that. We need to support that. So please, Bama, when, when I share this live with you, it's going to be a collaboration. It'll be on your page, too. And then I want okay. you to put the link. I want you to put the link to the store, okay, okay. so that we can definitely do that. And when I come to New York, I'm going to come visit the store. A boutique, I'm thinking that a lot of things you have, we won't see nowhere else. So if we get you, you only right. buy a few items of that one piece, right? I try my best. Yes, yes. I'm one of those people. I, I, and I was just telling the lady that yesterday. I'm sorry. It's just because I don't, I want you to shop and I want you to try to be as individual as possible. Yes. So yes. there won't be, there might be seven sizes, but there's only one of those seven sizes so okay. it's one small one medium one large so it's That's one right. of those kind of things like that so yeah yeah so i'm definitely looking forward to coming and what street is your store uh, i'm on halsey on halsey and Tompkins. okay okay i'm in best eye okay right so um a couple of blocks from Fort, from fulton street okay fulton okay i used to stay in church avenue right there by prospect park when i lived there in brooklyn so, uh, but I'm from Harlem and Queens, but I'm very familiar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it all. And I just would love for you to uh, please go support this young man and everything he does. And if you have anything else coming up, I'm sure you'll keep us posted so we can support that as well. And thank you for all you do. Thank you for being a positive light out here on social media. When I go to your page, I, 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 get, I smile when I see your posts. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we want. You know what I'm saying? We we all have lives. We all are out here to do different things. But sometimes people come out here because they're bored. Sometimes people are lonely. But the one thing we don't want to do is come out here and experience negativity. So I want to thank you for being a positive light. You know what I'm saying? When you come thank out, most you. of the time I laugh and I smile. But, you know, you come on and you do things. You know, And that's what it's all about. So I appreciate you for that. And thank uh, we, we thank you for sharing a part of you because I know you're going to go ahead and continue to do whatever you will have planned for the rest of the evening. Thank you for taking yes, time Yes, I'm going to go change. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> Make some yes. videos and let us see because I know Listen, you're going to it's time to put on a hat. It's time to get a cocktail. It's time oh, to put on something else. This is, this is for you guys. Like, this is special for y'all, but now yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's rather hot outside, so yeah. this is too much for outside yeah. right now. Well, go ahead. <laughs> have a good time. Enjoy yourself, and I uh, appreciate you. 
And uh, man, let me know about that party because I, I gotta get to New York. I ain't been in a while. I would definitely, I would definitely send you an invite, Crystal. As always, it's been amazing. Um, I enjoy watching your um story time, especially when you bring the doctors and the real estate lawyers and things like that. Um, like it's very, um, uh, it's always very um uh, informative to know things that you didn't know. Um, I always tell people life is still this big book of knowledge, and if you can grab a hold to most of it you can be an amazing person no matter what so um i i thank you for putting that um those um the, all of that information out because i mean having to be to have lives and um because i know we have to go now but I, I wanted to say this to have these lives and i've been on a lot of platforms and things like that the one thing i will say is is everyone is entitled to their life it's your life so whatever your rules and things are uh I respect that but to have your voice is to have your voice do not let anyone I don't care how many times you go on a live or anything like that do not let anyone take your voice away from you no matter what always be 100% authentic to yourself first and then it'll automatically just grace over this good world that we live in you guys have a great night it's been good. yes on that note, we'll see you next time on Storytime. Have a good Bye. evening, y'all. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Bye-bye.